just rounded the breakwater at Marina del Rey. Came into the very, very calm and still Pacific Ocean. By design, that's for sure. Um, two months ago when I did this, uh, I departed in pretty heavy winds, knowing that they were there was heavy winds, um, with the intention on you know skirting the sort of 17 knot zone, and um, just kind of using that wind to get to get out towards the trades. Uh, my concern last time was that I was going to it was going to be becalmed directly after that front, which is what happened. Um, and it worked out for me anyway because those winds like kicked my ass in such a way that it kind of broke everything that was going to break early on and not when i was past the point of no return so but today everything's repaired everything that showed up in the last passage attempt i've, I've dealt with and um we have 47 gallons of fuel on board and uh i plan on motoring at least for the first 24 hours and getting out past the outer islands and everything. Um, it's gonna be pretty mellow winds and, and seas for the first many days. Uh, there is a tropical depression, Kevin, that is scheduled to kind of break up tonight when it kind of hits the trades. And um, it'll just break up into a low. There's a tropical storm, which should become a hurricane in the next couple days down near Baja called Linda. She's um, forecasted to track due west so um, it, if anything, I'm, I'm not concerned about getting hit by a hurricane, but they could actually suck the wind out and becalm me and make the passage longer than it would have been. But that's what happens when you end up having to leave this late in the season. So we're just going to enjoy not getting the shit kicked out of us for a couple days. Get, get my sea legs in like mellow conditions and um, yeah, just, just work our way towards trade winds. A helicopter with something hanging below it. I'm not sure what that is. We're not too terribly far from St. Nicholas Island, which is a military installation, and they do all kinds of live fire drills and whatnot, so it may be part of that. I'm not sure. had a flyby from the US Navy. They hailed me on the radio. I chatted with them. Um, they're doing live fire exercises. This is the Pacific Missile Range. And um, they just want to make sure I heard the notice to mariners and everything and, and check my course and speed and everything. And they're like, oh, can you give us your course and speed and tell us how long you think you're going to be in the area? I was like, oh, I'm bound for Hawaii and uh, my course is 240. I'm doing three and a half knots and I expect to be on this course for the next 20 days. He came back on the radio laughing and was like, repeated everything. He was like, okay, well, you know, thanks for, you know, doing your best speed. We know weather permitting, it's, you know, not a lot. And I was like, there's not a ton of wind right now, so. But, yeah, so, that was cool. I had heard him call on the radio, but they only said, they said sailing vessel, they called out the coordinates, not quick, too quickly for me to like check my coordinates to see if they were talking to me, because they've been a lot of chatter on the radio. So. That was cool to see him fly over there. In the wee hours of the morning, we passed the point that I had to turn back last time. <clears throat> so that was a happy thing, a bit of celebration for me. Um, 
we made a hundred and five miles noon to noon yesterday, which has been our best day under sail so far. And um, hopefully it's like, a, you know, like hundred mile days is kind of the goal. So I was, I was stoked on that. Um, and uh, that would be nice. It's good to see what she can actually do out at sea, <clears throat> especially when we're not beating into a bunch of shit. It's like you can actually see what she can do, and it's pretty, pretty, pretty stoked on the progress. Um, seas are lumpy, but they're fine. Not a big deal. Um, they're not very big at all. And uh, yeah, everything is a brilliant blue. The water is like cobalt blue. Sky is baby blue. Very beautiful out. stressful right after that I had the hatch open still because I'd been like watching him and we got pooped and everything got soaked luckily it was like not too bad um, I got everything dried off but fucking hell <laughs> my brother saved my ass this is the one he had warned me about that was so close stressful man hopefully I won't see many more after this I mean we're 500 miles offshore and like not in a necessarily an unknown shipping lane just goes to show you that's why solo sailing so hard because it's like you can't have someone just sitting on deck 24 hours a day So this is the majority of ocean sailing, I guess solo. Laying in your nest with your lee cloth. And um, I'm basically either sit here, I have alarm set to like go up and look for ships. Um, also my older brother has been sending me reports watching the marine traffic app, um, send me coordinates so I can have a heads up because my AIS is not picking them up so that's awesome but um basically it's like I sit here and I read um or I stare at the nav station let's see if you can see that So, yeah, I just have our track going. I can see our speed. I can see if we're rounding up or rounding down. And um, over here, I have a wind indicator. It tells me the wind speed. <clears throat> and so, yeah, all night, I keep that iPad on, on the dimmest possible setting. And um, I'll just, like, have my alarm set for the night watches. I just get up, look around, 360, scan the horizon for any lights, check the sails, make sure everything's okay. And uh, the rest of the time, it's like, I kind of sleep with like one eye open, it seems like. Um, you can kind of hear and feel the ship and know if something's wrong. And there's certain sounds, I'll know the wind speed based on certain sounds I'm hearing that's always like a good indicator I'm like okay you know she's trying to round up or there's too much wind like last night in the middle of the night I got up and um, had to put a reef in because it started howling like 20 knots just out of nowhere in the middle of the night tonight I outsmarted it and like there was a kind of a little calm earlier the wind always ramps up right before sunset but there was a little calm so I ran up and tied a reef in and kind of got the boat on her track 
and um, sure enough it was like doing you know 20 knots with within an hour of me doing that so I was like I was stoked that I had that happen to me enough times in the last couple days that I'm like okay this is the routine so yeah that's like the majority of the day to day here on the boat and if there's not not too much chaos then you actually try to prepare some hot food otherwise you just eat cold food um, but yeah it's been good there's been no seasickness on this entire trip so that's awesome and the forecast is for the winds to like actually come down and by sunday this is wednesday by sunday we should be in the trades because we should be halfway and then it's like kind of smooth sailing in theory So this morning at like 5 a.m. I was laying in my berth waiting for my 5 a.m. alarm to go off to look for ships and um, I started hearing this weird beeping. I was like what in the hell is that? And uh, I thought it was like <clears throat> sometimes there's weird messages that come over the VHF. Um, and so I sat up and looked and the VHF was like shutting off and coming back on. I was like and then I heard it again, and I realized the actual beeping was coming from the wind instrument, like low vo voltage alarm or something. So I checked the voltage, and we were below 11 volts um, on the house bank, uh, which has never, ever happened before. I've never seen it go below 12. And I had checked the battery bank capacity when I had laid down for the night, and it, had, it was at like 85.9% capacity. Shut everything down and uh, started the engine and I ran the engine for three hours and got, it was like, oh, uh, the capacity said it was down to like 75 or something, 72% battery capacity, but it was below 11 volts. So I shut everything down and um, ran the engine and got it up to like, for three hours and got it up to like 85 point something percent and then killed the engine. And by that time it was like, the sun was coming up or was already up so um now i just have ever all systems shut off except for the ipad the gps and the wind instruments and my iridium go i'm hoping that there's something wrong with the icom vhf which that thing's only two years old so that's a bummer but hopefully because it was having trouble even when i had the engine running I, I turned the vhf on to see what was happening and it was having trouble picking up a satellite signal for the GPS. So maybe something's wrong with it. The batteries are up to, see we're at 14 volts right now because the sun's out and um, the capacity's up to 100%. It's all topped up. It's 11 a.m. Yeah, I think tonight will be really telling as to what's happening. So tonight I'm just gonna run the systems I have running today. And then at every like watch alarm, I'm going to log the percentage and the voltage all night and see what's happening. Well, I could be able to I should be able to charge all the battery stuff in the daytime anyway from just the solar. So, I guess that's not it's not really a, as big of an issue as I thought because the iPad has a battery, <clears throat> the Iridium Go has a battery, my phone has a battery and the GPS puck has a battery. So, is at 5.30 after I got the engine started and everything. I had been watching for this ship all night that my brother had alerted me to. Um, actually, my brother David and Captain Dave Stovall. Like, my brother David sends me, like, a bulk of, like, stuff to watch for in the morning before he goes to work, and then a bulk at 
night when he gets off work, stuff to watch for at night. And then Captain Dave Stovall watches the Marine app, and if anything looks like it's getting close to me, he'll message me and be like, hey, look for this, you know. So both of them had told me about this one tanker to watch out for. <clears throat> so I'd been watching all night for it. And then he was probably five miles off directly on my bow um, at uh, 5 a.m. So not a close call, but considering how big the ocean is, pretty close call. It was another one that got within 26 miles of me astern yesterday as well. And my, a my AAS has not been working at all. So the AAS works great in port or like around LA, it'll it'll light up the whole screen with a billion signals. But once you get out here, like the one ship that passed me so close by, it was not anywhere on. So that thing is totally useless and untrustworthy. So I have to figure out a new AS situation. Um, but you know, that's things things you find out once you get out out in the wild. Pretty mellow today. Um, she's kind of in a good track right now. So I decided to work out some kind of emergency, like a tiller for this auxiliary um, rudder wind vane that is like on its last legs. Um, took like a cannibalized, like a dive housing for my GoPro, the little handle rudder. Just bent this. Um, and I'm gonna try to bolt this part on to the top of the shaft and then hopefully this part will just stick out and I can turn it then I can disengage it and turn it to get it back on the wind or whatever um, so we'll see how this works out and try to get some kind of like another possible option of steering the boat um, other than the drogue <laughs> I think my little steering handle is going to work. Um, just below that, you'll see my repair where I over drilled and tapped new threads for that for the housing. It failed several days ago, so that'll have to be dealt with in Hawaii. But um, I think this little handle is going to work. Um, it's not very strong, but as long as I'm just like casually turning the boat, then it should work. Let's check it out. So here it is, it's bolted to the shaft top. You can just, when you disengage it, you can use this to turn the shaft. You'll see it turning on its own as the wind vane tries to do its job. And hopefully that's gonna make my life easier. I won't have to lay into the water anymore and like turn it by hand, because it was a nightmare and kind of dangerous. Um, so, Awesome. See how it works. It is afternoon of day 29. Last night, and like yesterday's noon to noon run was incredible. We got on this like on this solid track. The seas have laid down. 
the trade winds came backed around to their normal position and um, it was blowing like a steady 10 knots for over 24 hours and we just cruised. We made I think 76 miles on the noon to noon run yesterday which is a big bump from the all the previous days we've been doing so that is awesome. As of a little bit ago we were 198 miles from entering the channel between Molokai and Oahu and I am very very excited <laughs> to finally make landfall. Last couple of days um, I was battling the engine I couldn't get it to start had all kinds of problems um, got some seawater into the fuel so it got contaminated but not a lot and I was able to drain all of that off through the water separator with the fuel filter but I went through a couple fuel filters and so yesterday I put on my last fuel filter ran through all of the um, the bleeding procedures and but it was a, it was a two-day battle to get the engine to restart and uh, I finally got it started yesterday and ran it for an hour she sounded great and happy so that's one less thing I need to worry about um, and I'm definitely gonna want to have that auxiliary power if I get to that channel and there's light winds because there's so much shipping traffic I'm gonna want to motor through the channel overnight if I get there at night so that took a, a huge load off my mind other than that, just ghosting along, the days flowing together, and uh, pushing inch by inch towards Hawaii. Those are pilot whales. Crazy.
I couldn't believe there was no swell in that anchor. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a good little spot. Come this way, and then you start getting the uh, bubbling. Wings. Got the wind in our favor too. It's kind of blowing us towards it. You're chill, you're chill. <laughs> I don't want you to swing. You're, you're gonna spring us? Yeah. Okay. Me this stern line? Yep. It's <laughs> fine. Ooh. Yeah, bro. You guys are fucking lifesavers. It's fine, it, it's fine. You okay. can just tie it off. I can I can get it tuned up. Look at that. I'm on fucking land. Oh my god. Holy shit. 32 days. You got it. You made it home, bud. Made it all. Made it all, bro. bro. That is fucking madness. Fucking hell. Wanna touch and go off the fingers? Yeah, we can do touch and go off the fingers. Oh. Gotcha. Wait, you keep that weight. 